you have an unfair advantage. This is the Athletic Scholarship Podcast, episode number 145. Hello and welcome to the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. I'm John Fugler. Glad to have you along for this Facebook Live event, as well as the regular series of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. I'm an author, an athletic scholarship coach, a speaker, also a podcaster, of course, and my book is The Athletic Scholarship Playbook, a complete college recruiting roadmap for high school athletes and parents. And as always, we're going to start off with... uh, the Athletic Scholarship Playbook Tip of the Week. And uh, if you're on Facebook Live right now, there you have it. And uh, this goes along with last week and video. Video is such a a key part of the whole recruiting process, and I want to make sure you get it right. So this one is short and sweet. comes from page 65. When a coach asks you for a video, then you better have one ready. Either host it online, on YouTube, or on a hosting site, so hosted online on YouTube or on a hosting site, or even, hey, you might have your own uh, website, web page, you got your video there, but please make sure you get that done. When the coach asks, you've got to have it ready. And part of the advice I've given in the past is don't let that video out until the coach asks for it. Ask for a link, you send that link, but uh, make sure you have video as a part of your recruiting process early on. Well, I've got a story for you. Start off with this. It's about Brad. Brad was a big guy. Uh, Brad and I went through uh, middle school and high school together. Brad, I think he looked to me like he was seven feet tall, weighed 300 pounds. Actually, he was probably 6'5 and weighed 225. Brad was our hero on the basketball court when, when you were on his team. When you're playing against him, (laughs) that was another story. But anyway, Brad's height and his physical stature was his unfair advantage, I'll call it, because I wasn't that tall. I was not even up to six feet at the time, even in high school. Maybe I'd push six feet there. But when I played Brad one-on-one, all Brad had to do was take the basketball and just dribble and back into the basket, get underneath it, turn around, shoot, and score. And I, I, my arms were flailing. I was jumping up and down. I tried to push him back, but no way Brad was going to score no matter what. And then when I got the ball, he still had the unfair advantage because I couldn't turn around and back in. He would stand there like a tree and I had no way of moving him. And, And Brad had that unfair advantage. I had to shoot from beyond the three point circle. And there wasn't one at the time, by the way. That's the only way I could score. If I dribbled in halfway and took a jump shot, Brad just put up his hand and swatted away, swatted away. So Brad had that that unfair advantage uh, growing up. I'll never forget that. Sure enjoyed being on his team, though, in high school. Uh, there's another guy later on in life uh, when our kids were playing ball, baseball, Brent. Brent was fast. Brent's the kind of guy who would uh, bunt for a hit, Steal second, steal third, and score on a sacrifice fly before the other team even knew it. I mean, he was fast. In fact, his dad always said, you know, uh, speed never goes in a slump. <laughs> you know, you, as a hitter, you might go in a slump pitcher, but speed doesn't take a slump. It doesn't doesn't go into a slump. It's always there. It was his unfair advantage. He used it on the field when he ran. He used it uh, on, in, when, he was, when he was fielding. Of course, he used it when he was hitting because he could bunt. Uh, Brent also played soccer. I mean, he was all over the place. The kid was amazing. Speed for him was his unfair advantage. Uh, So we're talking about unfair advantage, the fact that you have an unfair advantage. Uh, And what I want to get into is what exactly is an unfair advantage? Uh, Do you have to be uh, seven feet tall, weigh 300, or do you have to be the fastest kid on your team? In the, in, in the universe. I mean, what, what is this exactly? I get it, John, when you talk about Brad, and you talk about Brant, but what about, what about me? What about just my unfair advantage? Do I have one? And, and you do. I'll tell you right now you do. And here, let me define what I mean by unfair advantage. It's anything that you possess that gives you an edge over the competition. Anything that you possess that gives you an edge over the competition. And it's actually a combination of things. 
a combination. I mentioned Brad had the the height and the weight, but he had some other things going for him that, that the whole package of, of what he had was an unfair advantage. He had advantages all rolled into one. Brent had advantages all rolled into one. You have advantages all rolled into one. Uh, let me illustrate uh, from my own life. Uh, I, as you might know, I played baseball all the way through through college, uh, Division One, and I was a left-handed pitcher. That right out of the gate for me was an unfair advantage, and I didn't even know it. I I knew left-handed pitcher was a little bit different, and you had some, it, it really helped, but I did not realize how much that was an advantage, unfair over everybody else. There there just weren't that many left-handed pitchers which means right-handed batters, even left-handed batters facing left-handed pitchers found it tough. And even today in the big leagues, a left-handed pitcher has an unfair advantage just because he's left-handed. A left-handed pitcher can throw 86 miles an hour and compete in Major League Baseball. A right-handed pitcher has to throw 95. <laughs> um, it's just that way. The fact that I was left-handed, boy, I wish I, I, wish I really um, knew the truth of that. Growing up, another advantage I had in baseball was my fastball. Not only was I left-handed, but I could really throw the ball. I threw hard. It was before the time of of speed guns. I I, I don't know how fast I threw. All I all I knew was I struck out a lot of batters, got a lot of guys out swinging. I had a great fastball. That was an unfair advantage. Everybody knew it too. When they faced me, they knew that the fugy fastball was hard to hit. So he stepped up to the plate at a disadvantage mentally because of my advantage. I, another unfair advantage I had was my, my grades and SAT scores. Now, they weren't super high, but they were high enough to qualify me for a good school. My choices, I had a lot of choices in colleges that I could have gone to simply because my grades and SAT scores were up there. So that gave me an unfair advantage over others. Um, getting back to baseball, I had uh, coaches would tell me this, and I it took me a while to figure out. They said, "John, you got a you got a great baseball sense. Uh, w- when you're playing outfield, and the balls hit you, you tend to know just where to go right off the bat. When the ball leaves the bat, you know where to go. Uh, when you're on the base path, you seem to have a baseball sense. Know when to run, when to not. That was probably my weakest area, though, on the bases, uh, and as a pitcher as well. Just that 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 sixth sense almost of baseball." a natural tendency, and and good athletes seem to have some of that. So those are just a few of uh, my unfair advantages. I want to get into what your unfair advantage might be. We're going we're gonna to go through some things here, uh, and you can check these things off in your head. And when we get the end of this show, I'll tell you uh, how you're going to apply this. Um, before we go into that, I, I want to let you know, since I just jumped into the story, uh, I'm working on a book series. A uh, series of, I guess, manuals that will dig deeper than what I've done with the Athletic Scholarship Playbook. That's, uh, and I've been working on this. I hope to have this out in two or three months. We'll see how it goes. Going a little bit slower than I thought, but I just want to let you know it's coming. Going to dig into each of the topics in the playbook and and go deeper than it is in the playbook. And I'm looking forward to that. So if you would just, you know, drop me an email. Say, John, how's it going? I need to be accountable. This is, this is true. I've got to be accountable. Drop me an email at john at recruitme.com and make me accountable to this because I have to get this out. It's a great idea. I'm pulling it all together. And I think it's going to be a series of, of three manuals. Uh, but right now you can get the recruiting power pack. If you go to my website, recruitme.com, there's three things in there. One of them is the resume template for you to send to college coaches. That's a fillable form. Go get that. Also, the other two things in there. One deals with video, and the other is uh, the first steps to an athletic scholarship. It's a short PDF. Go get that at recruitme.com. It's free. And another free thing I have that I've recorded is a masterclass, athletic scholarship masterclass, a recruiting masterclass. It's about 45 minutes. It's on video. It's on my website If you go to recruitme.com and click the resources page, you'll see that there. It's step-by-step to your athletic scholarship dream. If you get the free recruiting power pack, 
and you watch the masterclass, man, you are going to be on target. All right. So go get those. And don't forget to pick up the athletic scholarship playbook on Amazon. Now we're going to go right into what your unfair advantage might be. You have an unfair advantage. You do. You, you just may not know what it is. You may, not, you may have taken it for granted. And there are things, I'm going to go through some things here that you may never have considered. Uh, I don't know what sport you're in, and I'm going to use examples from a couple different sports. But think it through. What are those things that um, are your unfair advantage that gets you a leg up on the competition? Um, as I mentioned, the definition, anything you possess that gives you an edge over the competition. And it's a combination of things. Here's one, your coach. Maybe you have a coach who is dedicated and is a great teacher, a great trainer, and who has helped you get to the next level, has helped you become better. Not all coaches are like that. If you have a coach who teaches well, then you have an unfair advantage. Um, You might have agility, all right? So you're agile. Not everybody is. Not everybody in your sport is. If you're agile, it's kind of like those who have speed. If you're agile, that is an unfair advantage. Uh, That might be something that's, well, that's pretty simple. Yeah, but not everybody's got that. You might, if you play basketball, maybe you're great at shooting free throws. Not everybody is. And if you do, if you're several percentage points ahead of the average, then you have an unfair advantage, and it's going to count in the games. It's going to count. You can be counted on, and you could make a difference. You could win a game. You could put your team far enough ahead towards the end of a game because you're on the free throw line. Uh, You, if you can throw throw free throws well, that's an unfair advantage. Uh, I mentioned speed. If you've got speed in just about any sport, it applies to any sport, then you have an unfair advantage. How about this one? Your competition. If you're competing in a league or in tournaments or wherever where the competition is tough, if you're seeing tough competition most of the time, that's an unfair advantage because you become better. You do things that you ordinarily wouldn't do if it were easier for you, and that is an unfair advantage because when it comes to an athletic scholarship, coaches want to see you at your best, and your best is going to be better than others because you're competing against the best. And that's something that you may not even be able to set up in your league, but your league happens to be tough and you're, you're facing hard competition. Uh, your grades, your test scores, if they're high, you have an unfair advantage. Your work ethic. Not every athlete has a great work ethic. If you were raised to have a good work ethic by your parents or your mentor, then that is an unfair advantage. Not everybody works hard. And you, you may think, well, that's, that's dumb. That's, I, everybody works hard, don't they? No, they don't. Just look around you on your team. You have an unfair advantage. Uh, maybe you're left-handed. <laughs> in a lot of sports, that's a plus. I know it is in baseball. Uh, you might be a leader. Are you a natural leader? Are you gifted by God as a leader? That's an unfair advantage. Uh, do you have endurance? I was not one who had a lot of endurance when I was running. Uh, on the football field, I wasn't particularly uh, have a lot of endurance. Maybe you have a lot of endurance. And that simply is an unfair advantage. How about all those natural abilities that you have? Think about that. Start listing them in your head, those natural abilities that you have that, yeah, others may have, but you have them, and they're an unfair advantage for you. Now, when we look at these things, as we've discussed here, these aren't things that only you have. I mean, you're not going to be the only left-hander. You're not going to be the only agile person. You're not going to be the only one who can throw great, do well at throwing free throws. Uh, you know, your coach is fantastic teacher. So are other coaches for other athletes. But you add all these things up, maybe seven or eight things that you could list, maybe a dozen that you list that sets you apart, these things are your unfair advantage. The unfair advantage, all of those things added together is also an unfair advantage. Now it's time for application. 
What do I want you to do with this? Uh, of course, I want you to use your unfair advantage. Some of the things you can't use, I mean, you have a coach, but you can use your coach to teach you, but maybe you're a natural born leader. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Okay, left-handed. <laughs> yeah, use the fact that you're left-handed. Uh, your work ethic, yeah. So begin to use and practice more these unfair advantages. Hone in on those. Take advantage of those unfair advantages, okay? Go ahead and do that. This summer, this is the summer prep uh, podcast series that you're listening to. I'm getting you ready for the summer, summer recruiting season. This is an opportunity to truly, truly focus in on your unfair advantage. Take an inventory. When you're done listening to this episode, take an inventory as to what that unfair advantage is. What are those things that make it up? Anything that you possess that gives you an edge over the competition. And it's a combination of things. Uh, maybe something that you were born with, maybe the way you were raised, maybe something you, you developed in skills and talents. These are things that you may have a lot to do with and things you may have nothing to do with. You were just blessed with these things. These are, these are the things that will help get you to that athletic scholarship. So go ahead and focus on them. Well, I hope you enjoy this episode. If you have questions, I'd love to take questions. Make sure you email me at john at recruitme.com. Check out the resources as well at recruitme.com. And uh, we'll talk to you again next Tuesday. Publish every Tuesday the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. And uh, thanks for joining me to my Facebook Live audience. Take care and God bless you.